for fuck's What's sake. What's up, everybody? This is What Now Mofo1203. Welcome to another episode of a uh, friend of Duo. I'm also streaming this shit. I'm playing Asagawa Academy. This is something that my sister wanted to play. I don't want to do anything about the movie. I don't want to play this game. You're making me play this shit. The most awkward thing I have ever played in my entire life. Why am I here? Okay! The train made its way along the gentle curve of the coast of Japan, whisking me far farther and farther from home. Dear diary, today was the day it's I finally. It's just like the really deep voice female. This is when you're <laughs> in your what? I think it'd be best if you go down to the Twitch streaming, because to be honest, I think uh, a few of us don't really want to hear your stream go on. Uh, you love me! Uh, Aaron, can you move? I'm lazy. Aaron, don't be Got it and adjusted. Moved. His newspaper without making eye contact. You were moved. Uh, you were moved. <laughs> it'd been you almost an you hour. Were the, in fact, you were moved. he hadn't once you looked moved. at me. At least, he just all over the place. You were moved. My shittiest you were fucking moved. thing. You were moved. Devoided of conversation, I took instead counting the buttons you were moved. on the pretentiously lush. Man, I am not a good reader. Carmen C. Cushions. One, two, three, twenty-one, twenty-two, and so forth, over and over. I, I'm so lost in the conversation. What the hell's going on? So she's basically like not. I, I guess. Now and again, I turned. <clears throat> to look through the window where the trees were blurring. Sometimes I'd smear the green and would break and reveal a quiet blue sea of Japan. Eventually, it was rapidly made my stomach churn. I went back to counting the buttons on the seat cushions. Buttons? Buttons? Yeah. <laughs> buttons? Not everything back. Buttons. I don't see no goddamn buttons. One, two, three. What? The drink compartment shuddered. I'm terrible at rating. Why did you make me do this? My eyes wandered to the boy and his jacket. It wasn't his school issued blue that I and other students on the train were wearing. Instead, it was a green var varsity like jacket with an embroidered patch poorly sewn from on front. Oh, hmm. you're a you're first year then. So, you're a first year then. <sighs> Oh. You wanted me to do this job. I'll voice for the guys. Oh, yeah? Yes. He folded you his newspaper. I'm gonna need some water for this shit. He folded his newspaper neatly, set it into his lap, and looked at me with a half interested gaze. Did he just catch me staring? What? What? What was I staring at? Uh, oh my god, look at the charms. Now that lip paper is gone, I saw his face. He watched me through heavy lidded eyes. Heavy? Okay. His That's hair me. was immaculately groomed. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> his teeth straight and no. blindly brighted. Teeth? Uh, I'm gonna critique this game, because he told me to do it. There's something about him, the way that it's light hit him, that made him look like he was almost sparkling. Edward, is that you? Me? <laughs> uh, he glanced around the compartment, empty besides us, and he laughed. Oh. <laughs> no. I'm not a first year. I'm a third year. Really? The train began to slow, metal wheels groaning against the metal tracks. The sudden shift threatened to rob me of whatever was left in my stomach, but I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, willing myself to keep, to get, keep it together. What kind of impression would I leave? Booking? Booking? Yuking? On a student before I even arrived at the academy. The boy frowned. I picked the hem of my cotton skirt. That's not possible. I've never seen you before. Come to the guys! <laughs> why? Why am I- why is this reversed? It took me a moment, my mouth fishing, to find a response. Uh, I- it's because I'm a transfer student? <laughs> transfer student? Huh? We don't get many of those. Transfer student, huh? We don't what get many of those. <laughs> I removed my acceptance letter from the pocket from my front pocket of my uniform. The paper heavyweight, off white, had accumulated ceases, creases from my reading and rereading, as if the words might have changed since the last time I read it. The boy took it, studied it, and then handed it back to me. I suppose I'll be seeing you around. I'm so bad at this. I don't, I don't even know if you can, they can hear you. Maybe I should just keep reading everything. No, no I don't really want. He smiled at me as he picked up his suitcase lying next to him. By the time I had hiccuped a response, he was already gone from the compartment. I stared out into the empty hallway of the train. It was then that I realized he, having gotten away from the acceptance letter, knew my name. I never got got his. The train settled at the station and I filled out with the rest of the uninformed students. It was early April and the last frost of the winter had come and gone. The trees were already green, their leaves shivering and the occasional gusts weaving through them. The air was mild, only a few clouds hanging in the sky. I walked along the road with a swarm of blue jacketed bodies, looking at the little groups and breaking off from the crowd. Everyone was buzzing so anima 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 animatedly around me. I held my suitcase tight in my sweaty hands. Ugh. It was the letter bound and worth more than anything it contained. It wasn't far to the school and I was, or maybe the first time in my life, thankful that what I owned didn't amount to much. My school issued black Oxfords click 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 on the pavement. I walked this over and over in my mind. So many nights I lay awake imagining what it would be like to walk from the train station to a g 
as a go, as a go. I mean, as a go? As a Gao Academy for the first time. For the first like, time in my life. My new start. Get the uh, new school going. I always imagined. <laughs> I always imagined that everything <laughs> would change from beyond this sight on this walk. What the? F that somehow everything would magically be different. But as I looked around, I realized that nothing had changed. I hadn't changed. Whoa. By the time I had reached the massive gate to the academy, I forgot about the disappointments slouching in the back of my throat. The school framed by the gate's twisted black metal was just as beautiful as the glossy photos I had saw in the pamphlets. It was... This Asagao was it. Academy. Asagao Academy. I glanced around the swarm of the students gathered around the gate. Beyond it, tiny blue people uh, bounced around the Academy's main building. A girl pressed a button to the one side of the gate. The excitement in the air was almost palpable. Palpable? <laughs> Too stupid to read these. A few moments later, the black gate, with great effort, creaked outwards and cleared the pathway. As the rest of the group shifted into motion, I followed along a sheep in the herd. My stomach tied itself into knots. The crowd split off from a different directions for a moment and I panicked. Ah! A tired old looking man with gray hair called okay. out for the first years. A cluster of fresh faced students gathering around. Okay, him. the way how you should talk is like Hey hey look at that no, girl. No, no. <laughs> the tall guy. The old man is like a guy who has a <laughs> Oh god. Ah my liver. I turned a few feet away from the small group of boys who were pointing at me and snickering. Pink hair? Are you kidding me? Yeah. How desperate can you get? Uh, hot shame crawled around my neck. I attached myself to the group of girls following the steps behind them. In the distance, cicadas. cicadas hummed in the time to my shoes crutching against the gravel. My hair? It wasn't my fault that my hair looked like this. Luckily, I found myself at the girls' dormitory, Rimrose House. The building dwarfed me in its size and sheer intimidation. How many students did it? Asagawa have. As I approached the building, a redhead girl lingering nearby caught my attention. I looked away, then back. Uh, she was staring at me. She walked over. Yo, shawty, what it do? You must be my roommate! I eyed her warily. She was smiling and bouncing in a way that suggested that Oops. Hey, you said it to me. I know. Her views <clears throat> on life were aching to her perpetual bouncy council. Bouncy can What the fuck? What? Like basically. Me? Bingo. Of course you silly. <laughs> Let me guess. Room 325. I thought back to the paper I received on the month prior with a list of all the supplies I needed for the year and my dorm arrangements. <gasps> um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she laughed, but I couldn't figure out what was so funny. This is my pink hair. She laughing at me? When I found out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew you were a total main character. Get it? Anime pink hair girl? Fuck it. <laughs> I'm sorry. A what? Mm -hmm. When I saw you outside the gate, I knew it was you. I mean, look at that hair. I felt a lump forming in my throat. What was she talking about? Yeah, I don't watch anime. What the fuck is that? She had to be making fun of me. I hadn't spent more than five minutes on this campus, and I was already being mocked. My hand began to tremble. Is, is there something wrong with my hair? Her face... Slackened from its amused smile to a more worried expression. Then she began to laugh again. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's great. I'm sorry. Um, I know, sure. Okay. We're getting off on the wrong foot, aren't we? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm my Sasaki. You must be Hana. Okay, I bowed my head. Hello. It's nice to meet you, man. My. my. All your school books are waiting in your room. A welcome letter. I read the envelope. Okay. My started walking towards me, toward the dorm's front doors. I followed behind like a lost puppy? Okay. Did you check in front of the... Uh, at the front desk already? No, I didn't. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> Good. They'll offer to have a staff member give you a tour of the campus. Oh, is that your bag? Just the one? Glad I brought an extra bag of stuff to decorate your room. I heard already. I hope you don't mind. But I did wait the lights together, you know? She spoke quietly, the words bubbling from her mouth, and left no time to answer until the end of her monologue. Monologue? Yeah, okay. That sounds good. She held the front door open for me, and I hurried inside. Baby, that's hot. Girls filed up and down the hallway, uh, howling greetings and exchanges. Uh, vague necessities that got more often than not. How was your break? And look how tan you got. No, I, I don't think that happened to you. <laughs> it seems like everyone knew each other. I followed my as she led me through the maze of students and up to flight stairs. Each dorm floor looked the same as the last. Narrow white doors lining both sides of the pale pink walls. Thin gold numbers were Tact. To the front of each, the numbers were rising as we climbed. I'll tell you everything you need to know. I smiled, trying to let this calm my nerves. Thanks. We headed down the hallway on the third floor. My stopped us from in the front. Wait, in the front of door number three. 25. Here we are. Oh, baby, that's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. 
cats. A faint smell of hoppery, poppery, poppery. I don't know what Hopper, poppery. I think that's what it is. Uh, wafted through the room. The walls, like the hallway, were soft, powdery pink. I already defaced them in the tapestry of the posters, magazines, cutouts, and photographs. Some of the photos were of cats, but most were of the male models and rugged musicians. Bunk bed, two writing, two writing desks with the wooden chairs, a small dresser, and a mirrored vanity. All clearly provided by the school were the only pieces of furniture in the tiny room. The top bunk was already covered in neatly tucked blankets and row pillows of clashing pattern and color. The bottom bunk had a single stiff look looking pillow and a thin cotton blanket that I didn't need to touch to <clears throat> know was horribly itchy. I must have grimaced because my quickly smiled at me and it's like me freaking going back to high school and the teacher asking me to read back in the days i brought way too many pillows and blankets i always overpack i went to italy over break and mom got really mad at me because i brought five bags but we were only there for a week <laughs> she laughed pulled the several blankets and pillows from the bunk and rearranged them neatly on mine Woohoo yay a sudden twinkle of guilt Guilt? That embarrassment hit me. Perfection. Uh, there, that's much better. Thanks, Mai. I placed my suitcase on the bottom bunk and began to unpack the contents. Several changes of clothes, pens and pencils, empty notebooks, a few photographs of my father, and dilapidated stuffed rabbits. Dilapidated? Uh, an old portable radio and small black box. I opened the curtains and the sunlight poured in. I slid into the now uh, empty case under the bottom bunk. About two hours north of here, it's a small town called Amarisu. You probably haven't heard of it. I set the stuffed rabbit Mr. Bunny on my bed beside the purple and teal throw pillow. Go to a different boarding school? Or... No, I went to a public school down the street from my house. Public school? What was that like? Were the students mean? Did you have a lot of friends? I always went to private schools. My parents work a lot and my dad go- Oh, hey, what's that? Uh, I removed my ornately patterned or ornately patterned origami uh, crane from the black box and was setting it on the unclaimed writing desk. <laughs> Oh, this? My mother made it for me a long time ago. I set it beside the stack of a thick uh, textbooks, which I assumed were provided for me. Aww. Oh, so pretty. I've never seen paper like that before. <gasps> oh yeah, the lights. Let me go get them. I went to her own desk and opened the drawer and pulled out a long tangled string from the from fairy lights. I thought these were these would look nice. Here, help me string them up. Oh god. She grabbed the container and pushed pins, then pulled up a wooden desk chair out and over the tall one. I did the same with my own. Together we pinned the lights around the perimeter of the room. How was the train ride? Did anyone? No, not really. I was in the compartments with some guy and- What? Some guy, huh? Was he cute? Yeah, I'd suck his dick. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't even know his name. Get his name. Uh... May seem disappointed for the moment, then perked back up. You'll have to point him out. Okay. Once we finished, uh, stringing the lights, May climbed down from her chair and brushed her hair against triumphantly. Yeah! Done! Okay, now it's time for lunch. The food here is pretty good. There's a ramen place down the street from campus that's like out of this world, but the school only lets us leave. Maya walked to the window. You can go today, but it's Sunday, and it's pretty nice out, but I guess you might want to go to the calf since you just got here. <laughs> she was suddenly interrupted by her own enthusiastic laughter. Oh my gosh, Mimi Saitos, or Mimi Santos, sorry. Totally just tripped outside and fell on her face, I saw it. Oh, does it mean to laugh? Maybe I shouldn't. You dick. Oh well. Anyways, let's go eat. I'm totally- She led me out of the room before I even had a chance to respond. The cafeteria was buzzing with students excited for the new year. The only people as nervous looking as I felt were at the tables of skittish, wide-eyed first years. I stepped into the line behind May. I- Fight you. We won't do shit. Taking an empty plastic tray, we s shuffled through and asking for helping from my soul- from the silky cafeteria. Silky? Workers, when we passed something that looked good. With full trays, they let me straight to the table. And in the back, where a few students were already sitting, I sat down and took a seat across- Whoa. Hi, Mai. How was your brain? It was good. I went to Italy and Spain. Dad fell off the jet ski. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. It's better now, though. Oh, well, that's nice. I expected, to be <clears throat> I expected to be introduced to the girl, but the girl turned back to her group of friends, and Mai turned back to me. She began to assault her food with a fork and tell me in a practically minute-by-minute -minute account about her fleeting romance last summer with a boy she met on the beach that didn't go further than a few salty kisses. <laughs> I sat back and 
and let my talk. For the first time in, uh, since arriving on the campus, I felt like I finally, I was finally able to breathe. I picked my Brussels sprouts, my Brussels sprouts, <laughs> and studied my hair as I spoke. The more she talked, the more I began to notice the small details about her. She had a high songbird voice. What? She was dynamic, her face twisting this way into exaggerated expressions as she spoke. <laughs> she laughed often. She imitated people in wildly unflattering voices seemingly unrelated to her actual opinion from, of them. But most notably, she talked a lot. I didn't find this particularly annoying as it filled the silence and she hardly ever asked a question that required my full attention. Just as my was rounding off her shockingly detailed account of the time she accidentally walked in on her friend's older brother in the act of changing flash of familiar green caught my eye, I glanced over. <laughs> hey, that's him. Huh? I leaned across the table to whisper just in case he could hear me though. The ambient chatter of the lunchroom. The boy from the train, that's him. What? Jared? Um, yeah. With the weird jacket and swoopy hair, he picked up his tray and was walking past us, but something seemed to catch his eye. Oh, you. I looked up at him and suddenly realizing he was <clears throat> talking to me. Anna. Anna, I met you on the train. How are things settling down for you? Sorry. <laughs> really well. I found my roommate. <clears throat> She's been helping me out a lot. I gestured to Mai, who was thunderstruck, in fact, <laughs> looking around at everyone. People stopped eating and turned to stare at Jared and me. My shoulders bunched around my neck. Well, if you ever need any help, I'll be around. Third year, right? Well, my friends are in that year. Of course, they can't compare to me, but I'll give them the heads up. He flashed a dazzling smile and then winked. Think. <laughs> <laughs> it's the least I can do for such a cute girl. Oh, baby, that's hot. Oh, I'll see. I watched a turn of thought. Wait, I watched a turn of thoughts raging through my head as he took a seat next to a bunch of guys who were all wearing the same jacket. <laughs> That's Jared. She tore her eyes away from him and looked at me. He's so cute. He's the most beautiful guy in school. I can't believe he just looked at me. I looked at Mai. Her cheeks were glowing and in decent pink. Why do they all wear those wear those jackets? Aren't those guys supposed to be wearing? Blue blazers as a part of their uniform? No, they're allowed to. They're. You know Jared? That girl turned back around and was looking at me with a sudden interest. Uh... I. Did I know him? I only talked to him on the train a few minutes late. Uh. For a few minutes. So not really. We weren't friends or anything. But looking around, my. And this girl weren't the only ones who were interested. Everybody seemed to be listening in. They seemed to be surprised when he talked to me. Maybe a little white lie couldn't hurt. Uh. 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 Uh, truthful. Oh. She looked me up and down, sniffed, and then turned away. My le leaned towards me. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> Don't mind me, me. He was just trying to get in. Get in with me? Why? Well, you asked about me and those guys, and they're those are the normal boots club. Oh god. They're what? What's normal boots club? <laughs> It's a club. <laughs> it's a club we have here. It's totally, like, totally exclusive and full of only the coolest. I wanna throw up. They get along to, er, they get together and play video games. So. She exhaled a dreamy sigh into her mashed potatoes. So, how would someone you know join the normal boots club? You don't choose the boots, Hannah. The boots choose- What does that even mean? Yeah, tons of friends. I'd say the most popular kids in school. I mean, everyone in the school is up to them. I bet they could get any girl in this school too. Alright, boy. I'm not gay. <laughs> hey, are you gonna eat your cake? I shook my head and pushed the plastic tray across the table it's to her. It's a cake! You well, this is a popular school where rich people go. For the remainder of lunch, I listened to May and talked to Jared through the mouthfuls of his dissolved frosting. Back at the dorm, I stored through the pile of textbooks. Uh, it's connected. Connection lost. The internet turned off.